Floss Tube. Um, I'm Molly West, the Sensible Stitcher, and I'm in a different location today because we still have our tree up and it's coming down tomorrow. And um, these are some um, needlework, uh, I guess they're needlepoint stockings that um, are old and I purchased, but I think they're so pretty I stick them in the dining room. So anyways, I thought I would film in here today so that y'all could enjoy the Christmas stuff before I take it down tomorrow. I hope you had a great holiday if you celebrated and I don't know about you guys, but I am very ready for a new year, new, new start. Like not new year, new start, although I am doing that, but just a little bit of a reset. <laughs> We had um, a kiddo with the flu here at the very end. And so this is not gonna be a typical floss tube. I'm not gonna show you everything that I worked on in um, December. I'm gonna show you one thing that I'm pushing towards a finish. And then I had a couple of finishes. So I'll show you that. Everything else I worked on, I got so little done that I was embarrassed to even bring it out. I mean, it's like a length of thread here, a length of thread there. So. We'll just focus on the two pieces that got the most attention, and then I'll talk about my plans. All right, so the first thing that I'll show you guys is Harriet Tubman by The Primitive Hair, and I'm doing the big piece. And I will, I'm, I'm stitching it on 30 count mystery fabric. I have no idea what it is, but it is 30 count and I'm stitching it two over two with all the called for everything. Okay, so here she is. I have gotten so much done on her. Since you've seen her last, I'll put up a side by side. But since you've seen her last, I have filled in the majority of this, her her bodice, her face, and her either it's either a collar, a collar or a handkerchief. Those have been finished for a while, but I've come in, I've stitched in her hand, and I can't tell if that's like the spindle of like an a chair or if it's I, I'm not sure what that is, but that got stitched in, and then so I came back through. I finished the oval around the outside. I finished a ton of the bodice. There, um, there is a single color that will fill in the background of her portrait. So it is full coverage, the entire oval. Um, so I'm getting, I'm getting close to having that done. I also put in the dates and some of the wording. There's still a, let me hold this up so you can see. There's still a good bit at the bottom. I haven't even started on that enormous flower and there is a border along the bottom. So even though it's looking very finished, it's not. <laughs> My goal for this one is to have it completely finished by February for Black History Month. So anywho, that's where she is. I have gotten a lot of work done on this one and I'm super duper proud of it moving right along. So she'll come out again in January. My goal for January will be to completely finish the portrait with the exception of the background color. I'm saving that for, I'm going to, my daughter has a, a basketball tournament out of the city and so we'll be gone for like four days, the two of us. And so I think that fill in will be perfect for that. And so my goal is to finish basically everything other than the flower and the fill-in of the portrait during January so that February I can, I'll have a manageable bit to, to work on. So that's where I am on Harriet Tubman. Let's set this over here. And then the other thing that I worked on and just had so much fun with was my Little House Needleworks, um, what are these called? Hometown Holidays. And the last time you guys saw this, I had started um, this one. It is the Schoolhouse 
and I had not started filling in the um, the red of the schoolhouse. I got that one completely finished. And when I finished it, I decided to stitch Pop's filling station. And then when I finished that one, I decided to stitch uh, the tree lot. I think this is correct. So let me show you where I am. And I'm stitching everything on one piece of fabric. It is a 32 count Taupe Lugana and it's a full yard. So I'm just gonna, th this little series continues to grow and grow and grow. So I am going to just let my piece grow with the series. Let me try and get this kind of folded over. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so the first one that I had started in November is that schoolhouse one. And I used everything called for except I've changed out the ECRU for the B5200 so that my white stitches would show up. Next, I stitched, uh, let's see, Pop's Filling Station. Isn't that cute? And I stitched it as called for, um, Let's see, it seems like there was one change I made there. Let's see if I can, oh, I, my LNS was out of steamed broccoli and so I used, uh, you know, I wanna say I used something like spinach or what's that color? I am using the classic color works called for. Not There's a ton of English Ivy on this. Let's see, what did I end up using here? Weak Style Works. So I substituted the, um, the steamed broccoli for Weak Style Works Monkey Grass. That's super pretty. And then the last one that I stitched was the tree farm. Is that what it's called? Tree lot. And um, one of the things that I did was the tree lot seemed to have very different color, a very different colorway than the other two. For example, these two have the color cherry cobbler in them. This this one. And this one, that main color, the red is cherry cobbler. On this, on the tree lot, they called for barn door, which I used for the truck. But then on the door and the little cardinals that are kind of in every single one of them, I went ahead and stuck with the same red uh, just to give the piece a little bit of continuity. So I did, I did make the changes that they called for um, in some areas, but like the tree trunks, I went ahead and used the same color, it, even though it was called for different on this particular one, I went ahead and used the same tree trunk color that I'm using on the other ones, just so that the entire piece will have the some continuity to it, because this all of these colors were pretty alien from the other two. Um, so it was nice to introduce some new colors. For example, I love the way that that truck turned out with that barn door. It, it just, it looks old and rusty and wonderful. So, I mean, I'm glad I made some of the, I'm glad that I kept some of the called for the same, but I'm also glad I made some changes. So this is what it looks like um, currently. It's super cute, super, super cute. I love it. And I think I'm pretty much to, I, I might be able to get one more in over here but I can get probably four or five more in. This is, I mean, like I said, it's a full yard, so I have plenty of room to do whatever I want to with this. And my goal for 2023 is going to be at least one more, and that's it. I'm, I'm not gonna 
I'm hoping not to overpromise and underperform. I, I'm trying to stay realistic about it. Um, so I'd like to get one more of these stitched in in the new year. The two that I'm leaning towards are the Main Street Station and the Town Church. I've stitched the Town Church before as a gift. It's so cute. So anyways, those are the next two that I'm kind of leaning towards. I do have, to the best of my knowledge, I have the entire collection. Um, so, it's super, super fun, and I just keep all my, I'm a floss away girl, and I have all of my flosses in one giant bag. So, this one does have a goal, as does that one. So, both of the things I've shown you so far have goals. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you, I have a few things this year that I would like to finish or have a specific goal set for them. Um, the first one is, and this has been a goal before, and I just didn't hit it. Okay, consider the lilies. My only goal is to finish the border, and that's it. That's all I need to do. And my border has met. This is my starting point for the year. Let's see. Let me back a bit. This is my starting point for the year and the outside border has met. So I just have tons of tree, uh, not trees, but flowers and leaves that need to get stitched in throughout the year. And I'd still like to meet that goal. Let's see. Okay next project that has a goal and this is a big one is um what is this virtue by long dog sampler i have a couple long long dog samplers and i really want to finish this one i already own the frame for it the companion piece has already been framed and it's hanging in my bedroom so i just need to finish this this is what Virtue looks will look like when I'm finished with it. It's a black and white copy. And this is my starting point for the year with a goal of a finish this year. Let's see, am I right side up? Upside down. There we go. So this one is gonna have to come out very often because I have a lot of stitching left in this particular piece. So this is probably um, the largest piece that I, there, there are, there's one other one that I feel like probably could get finished this year, um, but I don't know for sure that it's going to. So I'm, I'm not going to make any promises to myself or to you all. The next one I'd like to finish this year is the Spanish Rose Sampler. Hello from Liz Matthews. And here is my starting point. It's so little and adorable. This is 40 count alabaster. And it is just the cutest little thing in the world. It just needs just need some love and attention. So that I would like to get a finish on this year. I'm really proud of myself because I have so many huge whips and I'm not, I am not making those types of um, commitments for the year. The next thing that I would love to finish this year is Hollyhocks by Blackbird Design from the Sewing Club book. Uh, I need a bookmark. Here we go. It looks like this. This was a new start last month. And all I have done on it is the very bottom. But this is not a huge piece. And I think it would be fun to work on in the springtime. And I am stitching this. 
I believe, uncalled for. Uh, I'm on 28 Count Legacy. That one. Okay, let's see what else I would like to finish. I'd like to finish this piece by uh, JBW Designs. It's a, the Rose Motif Sampler. And I am going to insert a picture here of um, what I would consider the very beginnings of a red work or like a red sampler wall that I have going in our cabin. Um, there are only three framed pieces right now, so I really need to get on the stick so that I can add to that red sampler wall. But this is my starting point. And I'd like to finish this during 2023. You can notice most of the things I'm pulling out are not very big. But that's okay. It's still a challenge to get this many things done. And then the last piece that I would like to go ahead and get completed by the end of 2023 is my little prairie schooler girl. I just recently started her also. She is so cute. And I am stitching her on, I believe this is Meshram Lugana, probably 28 or 32 count. I'm using all the called for DMC colors and she's adorable. And I wanna finish her. So those are my current whips that I either have a finish goal or in the case of Consider the Lilies, I have like just a goal on that particular project of just getting the outside done. This year, I do plan to work on every single whip for at least a couple of days. Um, most of my whips are absolutely enormous and I have no, um, I'm not putting the pressure on myself to get any of those finished. I'm just gonna show them some love and get them going again. So, but that said, I am adding some more new starts. <laughs> so I have a whole new start pile over here of things that I would like to work on in um, 2023. This is gonna be my new year new start. My husband gave this to me for Christmas and it is a year at Hawker and Hollow. and this will be my first talk run. I have the, um, my plan for the year is to finish January and that's it and that's okay. That is, I, I want to finish this one square by, the, by December, 2023. And I'm very excited about it. It's really cute. And I will be stitching it on 40 count platinum. So that's exciting. And I will be probably just using DMC. I have not kitted it and I plan to start it tomorrow. So I need to get on the horn. I need to run up to Joanne's and start reading around through my, um, through my DMC stash. My next planned start is Annie Beulah Mini Sampler. It's out of just cross stitch. Uh, this is the, what edition is this? Like, I think it's the most recent, let's see, October 2022. So this last fall. And let me see how I can do this so that you can see it, okay. I am going to stitch that little mini sampler. I think it is adorable. And let me see. Deborah Fasano of Historic Handworks. And I am going to be using this extra piece I have, a 36 count Abyssidarian by r and R. I just have a little piece of it and I thought that, that those would be perfect together. This is one of my favorite fabrics. So I am going to, so this still needs to be cut up also. I think I can do that from stash. 
Okay. So that's a new start with no goal in mind, just a new start. Then my husband bought me the most beautiful piece of fabric for Christmas. It is XGU Design Old Mushroom. And he got everything this year from the Stitch Niche in Arlington. He bought me a fat quarter of it. And it's super unusual and different. And I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to stitch on it. And then I came to the realization that I have three things I'd like to stitch on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I think they will all fit. I'm gonna double check, obviously, before I start cutting. Both of these by, is it Nemu? I'm not positive. I think would be awesome on that fabric. I think that the fabric has more cool tone to it than this one does, but I still think it'll be beautiful. And then the third thing that I'd like to try and stitch on it is Count Twice Stitch Once by uh, Primitive Hair. And I think it will also be absolutely awesome on that fabric. So, um, so that's exciting. I'm very excited to use that fabric. It's a 32 count. I'm not sure if I said that. So those are new, uh, new starts with no goals of finishing. I'm just going to start them. All right. This, at some point I've got to start these. These are our family stockings. As great as it's been having these and my little white ones that I hang and I have some old kind of pottery barn ones, I would love to have some stockings that I've actually stitched. And so I have the majority of the collection of the Shepherd's Bush stockings. Um, but these are the five that we felt like I, I sat down with my children and my husband and we went through them and we felt like these were the ones that looked the most like our family. So this one is Roma and that one would be for me. Let's see. This one is Birdie and it's definitely for my husband. He's an avid gardener. This one is Harry. It would be for my son because I love the trains across the bottom. My son still loves trains. He's in his 20s, but this one, let's see which one was which. Okay, these two are for my daughters and I will have to have them help refresh my memory. Okay, I've got Anna and Martha and I cannot remember which girl wants which one, but they both have little crowns. They are so sweet. They're both adorable. So I will start on one of these five this year with no goal of finishing, just starting it. And I have enough fabric for all of them. And I have extra of the, um, I have several other patterns and I have extra of the fabric in case um, way later down the road, my children are still pretty young for the most part and um, we get an in-law or a grandchild I'll have extra of these things in case they happen to want to fit in with us have the same thing okay so the next new start that I've wanted to do for years and just haven't um, are the anniversary of the heart pieces and I'm gonna stitch them on legacy by picture this plus but I'm not doing, they, what, what do they recommend? Like 40 count or 36 count probably. Oh no, it's 30 count. Okay, so I'm going with 28 count, but it's picture this plus. So it's probably exactly like a 30 count. Okay, that'll be great. And my goal is just to finish one, <laughs> just one. And I will be starting with January, but um, I think that part of my holdup with this uh, project is that January to me looks completely foreign 
from all of the other color palettes. I mean, there's January, February, March, April. I mean, which of these things is not like the other? It's definitely January. So, this one goes a little that way too. I've stitched this one before for a friend. So, I think that what I'm gonna do on the two that um, become almost neutrals is for the January one, I'm gonna rely heavily on December because they both have the snowflakes and lots of the like cold weather features. But my preference are these color palettes and they're gonna be very far away from one another. So my plan is to um, keep Blackbird colors, but just transfer as much as I can from the December colorway over to uh, Snow Garden. I think it'll be gorgeous. I think that it will fit in and I think that it will, I will prefer it that way. It will be my preference. And then as far as the Swan one, which I've stitched before, it also goes real light. But I mean, there are, for example, this one. So here's the Swan one and it's, it's strictly neutrals. Whereas here's one, it's pattern five, the farmhouse, and it has mostly neutrals, but it has just a little bit more color in it. So I might snatch a couple of the colors out of that one to uh, do the same thing. Just bring a little bit more color to those two particular squares. Those are the only two squares that I'm gonna mess with at all. The only thing that I will do differently is um, if I am stitching the square for someone and I'm going to be personalizing it, I, I may end up adding a motif or initials or something of that nature just I, just to um, personalize that particular square. But this year I'm just working on Snow Garden. All right. This one I've wanted to start since the beginning of time. <laughs> what year did this come out? 2006. And I'm starting it. I mean, I keep thinking like this is just too huge. It's so big. I really need to be able to commit to it, and I don't have to commit to it. I could commit to that little tree and just stitch in that little tree and put this sucker away if I wanted to. But I have had this thing fully kitted. I mean, look, look at all the DMC. And it's all just DMC, but I mean, I've got all the DMC I need and um, my fabric is ready to go. Everything is ready and I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on it, and truly, if I get just a few motifs, it, it doesn't matter, that's okay. I just wanted to start it this year, because I've put it off, I mean, I would guess at least three or four years I've been wanting to start it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it started. I pull it out during every kit parade and talk about how much I wish that I could start it. Okay, and then the last big start, is the Year in the Woods series by Cottage Garden Samplings. These are not in the correct order. And my husband finished buying these for me for Christmas. I had some of them and he finished the series for me. I am missing one, the deer or the stag or whatever it is. That owl is really pretty. and I'm stitching them all on one piece. And the color that I have selected, and there's that funny little bear. The color that I've selected is, I believe it's Vintage Stormy Night. Where's the, do I have a sticker? Oh, there's no sticker. I think it's a full yard of Vintage Stormy Night and it looks like it's 32 count. Let me see if I put the sticker on one of them. The... Oh, there it is. Okay. 32 count vintage stormy night Lugana and I have a full yard of it. So I'll have leftovers for a different project, but I think all of them will be pretty on it and the white from the snow should show up. So 
Anyways, I'm excited about that. My goal for this is to stitch one chart. <laughs> so in case you're seeing a trend in 12 years, check back in because I should have several yearly uh, charts finished by then. Now I'm hoping that with some of these, once the momentum gets going, that I'll find that, um, you know, I'm just crazy about it and pull it out pretty often to put stitches in, but I'm just I'm not wanting to overcommit this year. Um, I filmed a whip parade in uh, 2022, I believe it was August or September. It was right around the start of the school year. So it's only a couple of months old. And my goal this year will be to touch every single whip. Everything is gonna get some work on it. Sorry, I had a quick interruption. The way that I um, manage my whips is I line them across the top of a clo the closet that's in my sewing room. And then I literally will pull out the very first few on one end and put them in my stitching basket and stitch them the correct number of days. And then I put them into a finished basket that's underneath. Now, if it's a whip that I need to, I know I'm gonna need to work on again, I will put it back into the rotation across the top. Then the next month I will go and pull out a certain number of whips and work those through a rotation and put them away. There is no rhyme or reason for what I pull out other than I do typically save like seasonal pieces for that season, um, but not always. I mean, sometimes in February I'll work on Christmas or whatever, whatever floats my boat. So. I am not good at whip go. Um, I've tried and I considered trying it again since I've got some smalls to push to a finish. I just don't, I'm not good at it. That's, I, I love watching you guys play whip go, but I'm just no good at it. So y'all can come to me when you need a real surprise because there's no telling what I'm gonna pull out. Um, I would like to see lots of progress on as far as my big pieces go I'd like to see lots of progress on uh, both of my reflete swaths and I would like to see a lot of progress on my um, GGR and so those are those are some of the pieces that are really big but I would like to move them along at some point down the road in maybe like 25 or 26 I will want to probably focus on a finish with um, With some of those really really big ones And so I need to get them to a position where I can do that without interrupting everything else that I have going I did want to make a start I have a chatelaine and I wanted to make a start on it this year and I kind of hemmed and hawed with it and I couldn't figure out why. And I have finally come to the realization that the color of linen that is pictured, um, it's Alpine Garden is the name of the uh, mandala that, that I'm wanting to stitch that I have for Chatelaine and it's fully kitted. The color of the linen that was sent to me as part of the full kit does not resemble the color of the linen that is in, that is photographed and so I couldn't figure out like why am I not starting this and finally I came to the realization that the reason I wasn't starting it was because um, I, I didn't like the dark linen that was sent to me I have one other restart let me go grab okay so I have a restart that I am definitely going to do in 20 23 and it's huge this is definitely a long-term project I only own one heaven and earth design and it's this one it is no longer on their website and I don't even know who the artist is I just have this page printed out it's called black and white horse and when I started this project I started it on um, easy count And I'm using Pattern Keeper 
and I got a, I got a good bit of stitching in or whatever. I mean, it has a lot of stitches. It is huge. It's like 600 and some odd by 400 and some odd. It's enormous. So I got these stitches in and I came to the realization that it is really pretty against the white, but I don't, I didn't think that I wanted it on this easy count. I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't, the fabric was no longer what I wanted to do it on. So I took a giant pause. So at the beginning of Christmas, I had a piece of Aztec red and I thought, well, this is great. Let me use this piece of Aztec red. It's such a pretty color. And I have some art in my living room that um, is similar in color. I'll insert a photograph right here of the artwork. And so I thought, well, this would be really a very pretty um, piece to be in the same room um, if I used that Aztec Red. So here was my start using Aztec Red. Let's see, forget my away knots. Sorry about that. I'm just here, let me just show you that. It's really pretty. The problem, as you might imagine, is that this Aztec red is 36 count and I was stitching it. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's hard being old. I was stitching it. Speaking of being old, I was stitching it one over one on 36 count. And that little ear, that's a little ear right there, guys. And that little ear is so confetti heavy. It looks like just a bunch of white stitches. That was like three or four hundred white stitches and I'm gonna guess 15 different grays and near whites so this little tiny bit this couple hundred stitches that I did took days because they the stitches were so tiny and I was just struggling and I had on my five times um, magnifying glasses I'll go get them I mean look at these suckers let me show you from the side they are so thick can you see how thick they are let me see how I can show you look at that they are crazy thick look at my Christmas tree there Still could not see them. That's the point of those glasses. And I use those glasses when I'm doing over one on 32 count, and it's no problem. Finally, I came to the realization that if this, if this horse is gonna take me 15 years or however long it's gonna take me to finish this horse, um, do I want to try to look at 36 count over one for 15 years? And I decided that I definitely did not. So I am restarting it for a third time. And what I've done, but I love how it looks on this. I mean, I give myself an A plus. I finally have the color figured out for my aesthetic, for what I want. I want it to be on this with just the black and white, just uber neutral, but on that pretty red background um, and then framed in black. So all that is fine and dandy except to say I ended up purchasing a yard of 32 count Aztec red and it is on its way here and I have another pattern that actually calls for this same 36 count red so this will not go to waste because it is so pretty. So, and it's a Santa Claus. So I might start that next Christmas, but, um, so I will be having a restart and I don't restart things very often. I pretty much just plow through, even if I'm <laughs> not enjoying it all that well, but I am going to do a third restart on this guy. I just feel like it's such a big time commitment to do something like this. I want it to be, how I want it like that is you're gonna I'm gonna be investing a ton of time and energy and even though it's just DMC and um, 
like not, it, I, even though it's just DMC, I'm not using a bunch of like silks or anything like that. It's still an investment and I want it to be the way I want it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna restart um, the black and white horse from Heaven and Earth Design. And those are the things that I am definitely planning to start this year. My plan as far as touching everything, I will give every single one of my whips about five days. Um, the whips that I've shown you today will get much more attention than those five days, but um, some of my other projects will only get five days and that's okay. I am definitely a uh, process stitcher rather than a product stitcher. I've noticed that I finish, I finish my projects when they are gifts and when they're not, I just take my time and enjoy it. So anyways, those are my plans for the new year's. Lots of new starts, very low pressure. Um, and the finishes that I do have on tap for this year are gonna be small finishes. And that's pretty much it guys. I hope you all have a wonderful new year. Um, I had a great Christmas. My kids were all healthy by the time that Christmas came around and so we were able to really enjoy each other. Um, this is my super cute Christmas tree. If you'll, if you'll wait till the end, I will put in um, some photographs of my house decorated, but I will make note that on my tree, most of the things we have on here are like this was made by one of my children in 2020. Almost everything on here is kind of like homemade hodge. I mean, like look at that humdinger. I mean, doesn't every tree need that? Look at that, so cute. Lots and lots of little homemade ornaments and things that are um, very soft. We have, um, we have a child that puts things in their mouth and so we do our very best not to use any hooks or glass to make sure that things are really safe around here. But it sure makes for kind of a charming um, little tree. So anyways, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. I wish you a very happy new year and I'll include some pictures of our house and um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.